Hello and thank you for joining me for Lesson 2 for the introduction to Microsoft Excel 2010. Let's begin. Click on Start at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Then select the Microsoft Excel program from the Startup menu. Now, before we begin, I would like to just add some data so that we have some data to work with. I will also just magnify the screen a little bit to make it easier for you to have a look at. Now, this is data that we have entered into the spreadsheet. At the bottom here, I require the total for all the months of the year for, the, for these uh, products. So let me put in the word total here first. Now I press my tab key to move to cell B8. I would now like Excel to total the January column for all the products. If you remember from lesson one, we simply click on the auto sum function on the editing group on the home tab. So we click on auto sum. As we click on auto sum, Excel now proposes the cell range, puts in the little formula equal the sum of B2 to B7, and all we simply do is press the enter key to accept. And as you can see, Excel now puts in the result of that formula, giving us the total for the January column. Now I could come along here to February into cell C8, and I could do exactly the same thing. In other words, we select cell C8, click on auto sum, and press the enter key. But a very quick way of doing this and repeating the calculation for all the other columns, if you remember our little autofill from lesson one, that means we bring our mouse pointer down to the bottom right hand corner of the cell that we wish to copy, hold down the mouse button and drag it right across until we come to cell G8. And look how Excel has now entered the totals for all the columns right the whole way across. So it's a very quick way of entering the totals. Now so far we have not saved this, this spreadsheet file so it is a very good idea to save your work as you're working with computers just in case anything should happen. So the first step we do when we want to save a file is we click on the word file here just to the left of the home tab and this drops the file menu. We now simply select the save command. As we do, this produces the Save As dialog box. Now the Save As dialog box tells us where our file is going to be saved into. The last, this is known as the path name. This top line is known as your path name. So the very last place on your path, this is the folder where your file will be saved into. When you're saving files and documents on computers, they're usually saved into some folder in some area of your computer system. And if you think of folders as little drawers in the filing cabinet, well, this little drawer, this little folder is called My Documents. The reason I know that it's going into My Documents, it is the last one listed on the path name. So it always goes into the last one listed up here on the path name. Now down here, it says File Name, Book 1. This is not a very meaningful name so far, so we're going to type Products. Once we have the file name that we're happy with, we then simply click on the save command. And now if you observe your title bar at the top of the screen, it says Products, Microsoft Excel. So we're happy. So, so far, all of this information has now been saved on our computer system. What we do from now on, however, is not automatically saved. We must go back and give the save it again, save it again, top it up, top it up. So we must remember to do that as we're working with files. But for now I want to put another total in here. And this time I require the total for butter, my butter product, for the six month period. Now I'm going to click on auto sum and I want to demonstrate when the auto sum function really will not behave properly. The auto sum function, which we have a look at here on the editing group, is predominantly a column adder is predominantly a column adder. So let me explain that. Now let me let me first of all select the cell H2 and try the auto sum. And as you can see, the Excel program does propose the correct cell range, does insert the correct formula, so I simply press the enter key. Now again in cell H3, I would like AutoSum to work out the total for the milk products for the six-month period. So again, 
I click on the Auto Sum function on the Editing group on the Home tab. Again, Excel proposes the cell range. It says equal the sum of B3 to G3. That's all the figures for milk for the six-month period. So again, I press my Enter key. Watch what happens closely. Now, watch closely what happens when I request Auto Sum now to put in the total for the six-month period for bread. Watch what happens. Click Auto Sum. Now AutoSum has found a column above. So instead of going to the row to the left, it goes, aha, I found a column above. Let me add those for you. If you press the Enter key now, you have completely the wrong figure. You have the incorrect figure. So at this point, I must press my Escape key, the top left-hand key of your keyboard, just to get out of that mess. Now, of course, a way around this would be to go to either of these figures above and click in here. Remember, if you go to the fill handle, it will repeat what it has done before, which is equal the sum of the six cells to the left. So I would just simply copy that down. And then we come right down to the total so we get the overall total as well. So that's a little thing to watch out for. Remember that auto sum is a fantastic calculator, but predominantly a column adder. But your way around that would have been let me just delete these back out with my white cross. The way around that would have been to put in the first formula. Once you have it, go for the autofill and drag it the whole way down. OK, so that is how you total columns and total rows. Now, let's put in the prices here. So these are our prices for our individual products. So the price for butter, we will say, is 2 the price for milk is one fifty. Price for bread is one seventy five. Price for sugar is two twenty. Price for flour is two thirty. The price for tea is three forty. Now at this point we would like to calculate the total revenue. So at this point I am now going to use what's called the multiplication formula. Now the multiplication formula, if I multiply the price by the total, this will give me what the revenue was. Okay? So I say equals this cell multiplied by... Now your multiplication in the Excel program is the asterisk either shift and H, or for those of you that have a numeric keyboard, it's usually situated above the keyboard 9, but it's the asterisk. So this cell multiplied by the total number. So the price by the quantity, if you like. Yeah? So it's I2 multiplied by H2. You will notice that I type the equal sign first. This is very, very important when you're working with Excel. All formulas begin with an equal sign. There is no formula in the entire program that will work without the equal sign. All formulas must begin with the equal sign. So we simply press the Enter key. And now here is the revenue. Now again, I can simply fill that down because price by the total, price by the total number, price by the quantity, price by the quantity. Let me change this to quantity because total is not a great one here. Quantity sold, yeah? So now I could use my fill handle, but just so that you can see that formula again, I'm going to enter it again. So remember, equals I3, so the letter I, number 3, multiplied by H3, and then we simply press the Enter key. Okay, so I can go back to either of these. I can even go back to the top one and say, fill the formula the entire way down. Now, another nice formula that you could have is called the average formula. So let's see what our average was for each of the months. Now, the average formula is equals A, V, E, or A, G, E. Open brackets. That's shift and nine. So equals average, the full word spelled correctly, no spaces. Equals average, cell B2. So you can either click in B2 or you can type in B2. Then you must use your full colon, that's shift and the colon key, and click as far as G2. So what is the average 
quantity sales, if you like, for the range from January to June. Don't forget, if you open a bracket, you must close when brackets come in pairs. Yeah? Enter. So as you can see, the average quantity would have been 251.667. The average formula loves to put in so many decimal places after the decimal point. I'll show you how to take those down. So again, we simply use our fin handle, say, the averages for all the other months. Or for all the other products, I beg your pardon. For all the other products as well. Now we can highlight the cell range and we can take this down. Can you see here where it says increase decimal and decrease decimal? Well, we simply select the decrease decimal and we take that down. We can put in another formula, the maximum. What is the maximum figure? Now, this is a very small spreadsheet, deliberately so, so that you can actually keep track of what's going on. On real life spreadsheets, these could be hundreds and hundreds of rows and columns long. So these formulas, you know, they really, they're fantastic at picking out whatever it is that you want to pick out without having to trawl through, you know, hundreds of rows of information. So here we're using the maximum formula. So it's equals max, M-A-X, half the word this time, okay? Equals max, open brackets, that's your shift in nine. Again, we're going from cell B2, full colon, to June, G2. Close brackets and enter. So the formula reads equals max, open brackets, B2 to G2. What is the maximum figure? You can see this probably by looking at the spreadsheet, but if you were in a very long hundreds and hundreds of columns or rows, you won't. It takes a bit of work. Enter. So we go back in, fill handle, and copy that the whole way down, please. What's the minimum figure? Enter. Formula equals min, M-I-N, open brackets. Again, it's from January, full colon, right through to June, close brackets. So the formula this time is equals M-I-N, open brackets. The first cell address, full colon, to the last cell address. Enter. And again, we would like that for all of the others, the entire way down. So we copy that the whole way down using our fill handle. Now, we have done considerable work since the last time we saved this file, so it's a good idea to save your work as you're going along. Now, to save your work as you're going along, you simply click on File, click on Save. Notice how the Save As dialog box did not appear. The reason being is it has already been christened, if you like, it's already been given a file name, so it knows that you need to just top it up, save the extra changes, the extra work that you've made to your file. Now, if you did want to produce the box, then you can do that too. You can go File and Save As, and this will pull up the box. And then say Save, and now it goes, oh, but you've already saved it. Do you want to replace it with these changes? Yes, I do. So the quicker way to save a file is select File and Save, or if you like the keyboard commands, use your Control key to hold down Control and type S. This will also save the file, and it will also work for the first time you save the file as well. Now, some nice features that you do have with this, you can select some headings. So you notice that I use my white cross. I clicked into the first cell, dragged it across to G. For those of you coming from a Microsoft Word background, you may think that it has not taken and highlighted cell A1, but it has. This is just the technique and the look that Excel uses when you're selecting text. So this is the first cell. So I can say bold it, make them much darker. Maybe give them a colour red. Or maybe I don't like red, so now I click on the little arrow to the font colour. And I would select maybe blue. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with this. Now, if I printed this off, my headings are going to be to the left and my figures are going to be to the right. Not great if you're printing this off. So I would like these headings. So I'm going to click back into B2 and drag it, or B1, drag it across to G1, and say, I would like these aligned to the right, just to match the figures. So I click on Align Text to the Right, just in my Alignment group here on the Home tab, and it pulls them over. Other things that you can do, 
These are quantity. These are prices. I would like to highlight the prices and click on the little currency tab to say apply a currency format. So now it puts the format in. Revenue. I would like to apply the revenue here as well. Now I would like to save my changes again. On here, on the quick access toolbar, there is a little save command. Now this save command is very quick. Oh look, it has produced the control and S for you to have a look at. So it says you can either click on this or control plus S. This means you use your keyboard, control key with the S key. So control and S, so I can click on that as well. So there's a number of ways that you can save a file. Choose one and make sure that you use it. So we're saving constantly as we're going along. Now, I would like to produce a little chart for my work. So I highlight the text. It's very important that you highlight the text and all the headings that you want for your chart. So you can see I have selected from the cell range A1 to G7. Now, I would like to click on the Insert tab on the ribbon. Select the Column Style Chart. And I'll select a 3D column. There are many different styles here and I will cover charts in depth in a further lesson. So we click on chart. Now I can move this by placing my mouse pointer here where the words chart area shows up. Hold my click and I can just drag it down a little bit. And I put it here. I can scroll down and let you have a look at that. Please observe your screen at the moment. At the very top of your screen because my chart is selected, it says Chart Tools. Look how the, the home screen has changed. If I click back on any of these cells, watch your screen again at the top. Look how it reverts back to the Home tab. Let me click back on the chart again. Look how the Chart Tools option has now appeared with extra tabs, Design, Layout and Format. So just be aware of this, depending on where you're working on a spreadsheet, I'll click back on the spreadsheet area again, different options will become available. Now we would like to save and close our file. So we click on the save icon, we select file and close. Thank you for watching Lesson 2 with the introduction to Microsoft Excel 2010 with Miriam, step by step. And look out for the other videos in the series.